Hello YouTube fans, here the game. And it's one fire. Do 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 If you wonder why I'm doing the Twilight Zone theme, here's one fire. Twilight Zone the movie. Say it again. Twilight Zone the movie. Now in nineteen eighty three they were to celebrate thirty years of Twilight Zone. Now there was half and half in doing a new TV show, which of course in the mid 80s they did do that being the new Twilight Soul. But instead of doing a TV show, they decided to do a movie version of the Twilight Soul, being Twilight Soul the movie. And um, they had a lot of well known diet, just diet the Twilight Soul. You know what I mean? You had um, Steven Spielberg, you had John Hooper. You had the diet that we all know did American Werewolf in London. You had them all. You had all these di directors, and so and so on. So how can they gonna go? So you got the same theme to do 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 with some date practical effects. As we all know, sadly to say, the one that presented the show, the Twilight Zone, couldn't do it because we all know he passed away. But that's the one with a similar voice to a monologue. And we all know that um that basically because of that, most of these were just remakes from the the show. Now the first two I could take them a leave from, but we all know the history of the first story. It's a game was done by the same director, Don Landis. The director of his American Web in London, the Blue Buffers, and so on. Don Landis did the first story. And I fuck it, I'll tell you the history. Um, when they was making the, the story, the Don Landis didn't like the ending. He felt it was pre. He felt it was depressing. He thought it was dark. So he wanted to go with the ending. So we had the actor on set running around, supposed to be fear am. He saves his kids. He's supposed to have an happy ending, but that was not the taste. And then the doctor, when he was on set, accidentally tasked. Killed the actor, sad to say, killed two of the kids, and some of it, sad to say, is footage what you can see, and the rest of it got exploded. And the actor, and like I say, the, the two kid actors sadly got killed. We're filming Twilight Zone the movie. The history of it is more shocking. Look at what the history about this, it will shock you. This poor actor, these two kids, sadly lost their lives. We're filming a film. It's a true story and it's very sad. Look at the history, just put in the toast of Twilight Zone the movie. You can probably find any art to do, anything about it. So they're going to go to so that to me is more interesting than the first story. So, like I said, the star who started to use this life. Um, it starts off when he's in a bar, you get the idea he's racist, he doesn't get along with anyone of any race, he's out of work, he's insulting every race, so I don't get unpredictable connect. And these guys are having a go at him because he's very loud in the pub. He walks off, tells his mates he's going in, a, in for an Amuda. And next thing you know, he finds himself in World War Two, And it does, you get the idea that he's a Jewish person in World War Two. You know, you get the feeling of what it would have been like if he was a Jewish person in that era. You've got these German soldiers getting book shots at him. He falls, you think he's falling to his death, but then he's in the era. Particularly correct, but that other when you know you have the two tut sab, they're chasing after him and they're getting shots at him. He dumps in water, then he's in fear. Um, Dan shoots at him, he manages to get out of dodge, and then he gets caught. And then he's in a fad, he's back, he's got these German prisoners, he's taken to the 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 constitution tamp, you get it, it's be it's in that era of what it would have been like if it was a certain race without being predicted to that of what it would have been like. And you typing off, his mates are walking to the pub, they don't see him, I'm in, I'm in and it drives off. No just like I say, John Landers hated that. He felt it was pink, he felt it was depressing, he felt it give it a better ending, where he becomes a better person, a better man. So he was going to do it where he was in Fiat Ab, he was going to save his Fiat Me's kids, he changed the error off his race, he became a decent person, and he felt that would have been a better ending. Even I felt that would have been a better ending. But like I said, rewind back, Tats is there, when he wanted to redo that ending, and there the top to on set, 
to that, killed him, killed his two kids, and they sadly got killed when filming that scene of the Twilight Zone. So that's why you get the sad, depressing Brink ending. Yeah, he's a racist, I get it, but at the end of the day, he didn't deserve the fate what he got. I mean, he would have got a better ending had this sad, tragic death would have happened. And it is sad, you know what I mean? A film, of all things, would be professionally done. So for that to happen, John Land just got chucked to court. He's had to prove the accident. It was only an accident, blah, blah, blah. And you know what I mean? It's a shitty thing. It's a shitty thing for anything to ever happen. Like Brandon Lee and other actors who have lost their lives in an accident. They're doing a fucking film. So that to me was more shocking than anything to hear about the story of that. So it's not the Twilight Zone. So now we get to the next one, Kick the Can. This was definitely a remake, and I've got to admit, this one's a lot better than the um, TV show. I thought the TV show was like depressing, like Brink ending, where the film one, they sort of looked at it for, let's give it a happier ending. But this to me, I bet the ending's better than the TV Pole Jam version of the Twilight Zone. But I felt this, to me, obviously done by Steven Spielberg, this one. To me, I felt this one was a bit like an episode of um, Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories. If everyone remembers that, I remember reviewing the TV show. And one day around the road, I might review it again, Stephen King's Amazing Stories. It just reminds me of that. It's this old man. He's in an old people, so this other lad turns into a kid. You've got this guy, has his special powers. Same actor appeared in the signing. Remember the guy gets axed and he's a you know, he he warns a little lad and he gets axed by Tat Nicholson, and that's the same actor who's sad to say no longer with us. May he rest. So he just sees old people, special powers, they're all turning into kids, they all want to be turned back. One lad doesn't want to, this old guy, so he still remains a kid. And the old guy wished that he didn't, because all there was a now kids. And he, he, he didn't. And he, he says, I want to be, I want to be a kid. But it doesn't end that way. But it still has a bit of a happy ending compared to the TV, so it's a bit downbeat. So the first two, I don't mind them. I felt that would be more better than Stephen Spielberg's Amazing Stories, the second one. But the other two I do love. I love. This one was more of an horror one. It's this little boy. Now, little boy had his cheapy eyes. It's wide open like that all the way through. And you get this woman who accidentally hits him with a car. Before that, he gets pushed by these boys. And she feels bad because she almost won him over. <laughs> but she goes in this house and you find this little boy. He's what he's supposed to be. He has these special powers. There's a bit where she walks past the stairs and you've got this dirt with no mouth. Really cheapy scene. And these people are stared shitless off him because he has these special powers. This one dude has a go at him. And he says, he puts in Tartoon land. With these evil Tartoons. They're all trying to get this poor dirt. And this one Tartoon thing eats. So he looks frightening. And he says, da -da -da -da, that's all Ethel. There's a bit before that where he gets his dad to pull his hat out and his big evil rabbit jumps out, really looks frightening, good practical effect. I will miss them days, I keep saying that. Uh, but then this mother woman takes control of him, gets him to control his powers, the drive off in the car, he got the idea it's going to be a happy, sweet ending. <laughs> But the best one's the last story. It's a guy, he stared being on an aeroplane. And I do remember this originally was played by um, Captain Turk. I remember mentioning him in the Star Trek films, being Thingy, I remember his right name. Captain Turk at the moment, I'm thinking of the actor's name. Um, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. But yeah, you, every day it was him, it was a die stared on an aeroplane. You keep saying that he's a monster and you think it's his imagination. Well, this is similar to the same story. And uh, they're being them sat in They're being them sat in there was the original one in that episode. I could get that. Uh, it was the one in the TV show. In this one, it's the same actor. You might remember him being the villain in Tiff Dango. Made him Bigfoot and the Andersons. He's been in loads. I mean, loads of stuff. So he's playing the character what William Satner played. 
and he's got a fear of air the pain, he's got a fear of heights, but he's got a go on his business tip. He's got he's about to smoke a cigarette and I've got to admit, I had a few chuckles here. His little dirt said, no, 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 no smoking. No, 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 no smoking. Which I had a few laughs and chuckles there. And then halfway through it, he sees a monster, and all the way through the film the film, you think it's his imagination. See that monster again, good practical effects. Looks a hell of a lot better than what it did in the TV show, where it looked like something out of the 60s Doctor Who. <laughs> so you do see some good practical effects there. He shoots the air of pain, everyone's going do like it. The monster goes up to him, touches his forehead like that, and he does that, and then just jumps away. And then they take him away, not only through the, that film, you think it's his imagination, you think it must have been him just imagining this, but then halfway through the film, to see the damage of the aeroplane and you realise that's not the taste. And you see this one guy driving the ambulance and he says, Can I sell you something what's going to stare you? And then you're going to end it. Do, 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 do. Before that, that did fire one. I forgot about that. There's a bit in the opening where they're driving a the car. You've got these two guys talking about the Twilight Zone, the TV show and the Outer Limits. Which we all know was in competition in that era. And his mate says, do you want to see something stare Which, funny enough, is the same actor that played in the Blue Buffers, as well as Ghostbusters. And there's a bit where he's doing that, and he's doing that, and he's doing it again, and he's doing to this evil, rich monster. I remember when I first saw that, it definitely made me jump out of my skin. And he's got the idea he kills his mate, he's his monster disguised as a human. It's, it's just a typical jump stare. I wouldn't be surprised if... John Land just directed that scene because it's like something you'd love to see in a medical werewolf in London. But it's funny, he says, Do you want to see something stare there? <laughs> just that monster in the tap. It's a bit dated now, but back in its day, I do admit, it did shit, it did stare the shit out of me. But yeah, the first two stories are really good. The other two could take it or leave for them. I mean, the history of the first story is more interesting than the story itself. But, yeah, that's Twilight Zone, the movie, which basically was just celebrating 30 years from the um, 50s TV show. Because I've got to admit, right, I've got to admit that I used to do up watching the, the 50s TV show. It went on for the 50s to the 60s. And then the presenters decided it wasn't really good and he he didn't know at the time the ratings were bid. He did other shows after the Twilight Zone, and we all know he sadly passed away. So, like I say, they was going to do another TV show of the Twilight Zone, but it was never to be. Instead, they did Twilight Zone the movie in 1983. And then in 1985, they had the new Twilight Zone, which again I remember watching back in the days of TV. I remember just watching it religiously on a Friday night. And as well as the 50s so in black and white. I used to love the music. Everyone remembers the music. Do, 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 do. But yeah, I didn't mind it what it was. It definitely had some worry in it. It was scary when it wanted to be. It had a few good stories to it. Fuck it. Five stars from me. That's the Twilight Zone, the movie. But into them. Be smart. Be safe. See you later.